big book the Indians are always looking at. It's a cookbook, and your picture is on every page. But I'm all muscle. Oh, Bib, what are we going to do? Just introduce Dave. Dave in Letterman. One question for the studio audience is, everyone happy with their seat? Yeah. Had, uh, had a little bit of ugliness in the audience a minute ago. A couple of guys, actually three guys in suits and ties, friends of somebody, am I right? Are they friends of somebody? Like big time guys, deadbeats who have not... They did not see fit to wait the three years for tickets to get in here to our tiny little studio, and so we bounced those clowns. They're gone. They're history. <laughs> and, and in their place, we have a lovely couple celebrating their anniversary from Durham, North Carolina. There they are, right there. I thought for a second we were going to have to call the National Guard. And as a matter of fact, what the hell, let's call the National Guard. I, uh, I had a terrible nightmare last night. I woke up screaming and sweating. I dreamed that I was entertaining at the White House, and I was singing, You Light Up My Life. Ah. <laughs> Ooh. Ow. Well, uh, here in New York uh, City yesterday, uh, Van Gogh's, one of his paintings, Irises was the painting, sold for 53.8. Nine million dollars. That, of course, includes the frame. Yeah. But, you know, seriously, ladies and gentlemen, it's so difficult these days. Uh, Gary Hart will be speaking at uh, Cornell University tonight, former Democratic presidential nominee. <laughs> um, uh, the topic uh, of his address this evening will be the balance of trade deficit and hitting on co-eds. So, Now, this is kind of sad. I'm walking to work today. I get off the subway down there about... Uh, where, where do I get off the subway, Paul? <laughs> I, take, I take the D in from Staten Island, I think, and then I'm lost yeah. once I get here. I'm not sure about that. Yeah, anyway, uh, there's a crowd of uh, people gathered on a sidewalk, and I look up to, like, the 50th or 60th floor, and, and sad but true, you see it every now and then. And I guess now, with the financial situation being whatever it happens to be right now, there was a guy you know, who was going to jump off, off the ledge. And, and, and most of the people in the crowd, as you would expect, were, were yelling, jump, jump. <laughs> but uh, it was interesting. This one guy said, eh, does, does this mean your apartment will be vacant? <laughs> What's your address? <laughs> so. We're going we're gonna to look at traffic tonight. Hal, are we ready to go out there on the Triborough Bridge? Yes, sir. This is uh, one of the many roads uh, in and out of uh, Manhattan. Uh, this is the Triborough Bridge, and uh, $2 is the fare? Is that what it costs to get in and out of New York City now on this bridge? $2, and uh, this would be rush hour. And uh, how do you do, ma'am? Hello, how do you do? Nice to see you. Hi, how are you? <laughs> This, uh, this bill, uh, bridge is like 50 years old, Paul, and I believe since they uh, opened up the bridge way back in uh, 36, something like a billion automobiles and trucks have uh, traveled to and from uh, Manhattan on that bridge. And uh, so we're going to spend some time this evening just looking at rush hour traffic. Paul, a little, <laughs> a little piano music here while we visit with these. Would you like fries with that? <laughs> Nice to see you. Where are you going, ma'am? I say, all right. Have a safe trip. 
Anybody else coming? All right, these people are waving. How do you do? Nice to see you. Hello. You know, you know, you have a body in your trunk. <laughs> yeah, I put it there last night. Uh, what did he say? Something awful. Anyway, we'll be uh, watching traffic all night here uh, in New York City. We got a great show for you. Martin Short is with us tonight, and uh, Candace Bergen is here, and a uh, young comedian Stevie Ray Fromsky. Now, say hello to our good friend. Thank you very much. How are you doing, Paul? I'm doing marvelously. I'm moved by that uh, response from the audience. Wasn't it nice? Yeah, it was very nice. Well, I think they like you. Well. And you, Paul, as an entertainer, you like them, don't you? As an entertainer, it is my duty to like them. That's right. <laughs> and your pleasure, your privilege to like them. It's my pleasure, as Billy Preston says in his Vegas act, it's my pleasure to entertain you mm -hmm. this evening. All right. It's my pleasure to be with your people. This evening. I'm exhausted. I got no sleep last night what because happened? my neighbor's dog came over again last night. Now, this dog is about, conservatively speaking, the size of this desk. He came over Monday night and he stayed all night. And I think what he does, I think he has a dog house, and so the neighbors let him out, and he goes into the dog house for like 20 seconds until the neighbor's lights go out. Then he cuts across the yard to my place and he comes in and spends the night there. And Monday night he came in and took a huge dump on a brand new rug. <laughs> a dog about this size. How did that come out, by the way? Well, I'm still working on it. I got some of that spray stuff this yeah. morning, and I sprayed it on there. But so last night, I'm, every time I hear a sound, I wake up thinking, uh-oh, he's doing it again. So it's very difficult. So he came over last night? Yes, Paul, he came over. <laughs> to be with his people. <laughs> the hell that was. <laughs> that means... Let's, uh, let's do a top, no, let's go back out to the Triborough Bridge. Paul, a little piano music. Let's watch some uh, traffic here in uh, Manhattan. These are the folks on their way home. And uh, from this bridge, you can get, uh, I guess the three boroughs involved would be uh, Manhattan, uh, the Bronx, and Queens. How do you do, ma'am? Nice to see you. All right, just keep moving. Oh, she apparently doesn't have the, uh, the exact fare. How much is it? Is it two bucks? We'll get this for you, ma'am. That's all right, you keep that. We'll take care of this for you. In fact, I'll tell you what, I'll give you $100 for the car. $2, I just can't get over that every day to get in and out of this town, it's two bucks. Hello? Hello. Ma'am, ma'am, so, uh, difficult to strike up a conversation this way, isn't it? Gentlemen, how do you do, sir? What is your name, please? Al Hezekiah. Uh huh. And where are you going, Al? Uh, to Queens. I see. Are you going home? That's right. Are you finishing up work for the day? Just finished for the day. Uh, how much longer do you think it'll be before cars start honking really loudly at you? Uh, another two seconds or so. All right. Listen, uh, uh, we're going to take care of this toll for you. You just go on through. Okay. Thanks a lot. All right. Good luck. Thank you. Try not to bust that thing. <laughs> Hi, how are you? May I, may I have your name and your... Uh, okay. Thank you so much for using the bridge. Hi, how are you? Okay. You, you have a very friendly face. Thank you. I wish I could say the same for your passenger. <laughs> nice to see you. Have a nice evening, gentlemen. Okay, bye-bye. I think that might have been a kidnapping in progress there. How do you do, sir? What is your name, please? Frank Pardo. Frank, my name is Dave Letterman. Nice to see you. Are you on your way home? I sure am. Uh-huh. And uh, did you have a pretty good day? Yeah, fair. What, what do you do for a living? I'm a medical photographer. Ooh. Oh, yeah, I know. A medical photographer? That's right. Oh, my God. Well, go home and take a nice, long, hot shower. I sure will. Wash my hands good. Please do. Right. Ooh, Lord, a medical... So you go into a hospital for an appendectomy and you get like a photo album out of the deal? <laughs> the damnedest thing I've ever heard. How do you do, sir? Nice to see you. Thank you for using the bridge tonight. It's Marvin Hamlish, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Pretty good shot. Nice going. <laughs> Came nowhere close to hitting the uh, sack there. Hey, wait a minute. That's my car. What the hell? <laughs> 
Yeah. All right. If we get, if we get, that's all right. Good night, sir. Be careful. Put my quarter through. Do what? Thank you. Okay. If we get two people in a car, we can see if we can get one to hook it in from the passenger side. Oh, excuse me, ma'am. Before you pay the toll, is it a coin? Is it a token? What do you have there? It's a token. Okay, give it to your partner there on the right-hand side. Now, who is that? Now, see if he can hook it over the roof of the car. <laughs> give it a try. It's a hook shot. Roll, roll down the window. Let him try. If it doesn't go in, we'll pay the toll, okay? Okay. You want me to do what? Give it to you. All right, yeah, yeah, give him, now see if he can't hook it over the roof. All right, roll down, here we go. Yeah! Good enough, all right, we'll try, we'll try later. Thank you very much, ma'am. Okay, see, now we have a little project, Paul. We can see if somebody can hit that sometime tonight. Uh, let's come back here uh, to the studio. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is, take that shot again if you can, Hal. This is New York City winter, right there. That's, that's what we have ahead of us, about five months of that crap. Uh, let's do the uh, top ten list tonight uh, from the home office in Scottsdale, Arizona. The top ten... It's the top ten historical inaccuracies in Napoleon and uh, Josephine, the, the ABC miniseries. Anybody watching the ABC miniseries? No! Okay. Uh, top ten historical inaccuracies in that production, Napoleon and Josephine. Number ten, fans did not do wave during beheadings. Number nine... Dinosaurs were extinct long before Battle of Austerlitz. Uh, number eight, after he returned from Moscow, Napoleon did not check phone machine for messages. Number seven, Prussian infantry uniforms were not Sansa belt. Number six, was never visited by Harlem Globetrotters on Island of Elba. Number five, Napoleon never met Abe Lincoln, much less form a detective agency with him. Number four, Napoleon gave himself title of Emperor, not Chocolate Thunder. Number three, when Napoleon first saw Josephine, could not have murmured, Ucha Magucha. Number two, Escape from Elba did not include hydrofoil chase through Everglades. And number one, this is the number one historical inaccuracy in Napoleon and Josephine. The French win battles? Come on. We got a uh, got a pretty keen show for you folks tonight. We'll do a commercial. We'll be back with uh, more from the Triborough Bridge and Martin Short. So come on back, folks. <laughs> Just for your information, the Triborough Bridge uh, is uh, 13, uh, 1,380 feet long, and then there are two side spans, 700 feet in length each. Uh, 60 million cars use it in a typical year, and it costs $60 million to build, Paul. $60 really? million. But it's generated over a billion dollars of income. So it's worth the, uh, the investment, I guess. That's right. So maybe you and I ought to think about getting our own bridge. <laughs> Our first guest tonight is one of the most uh, talented writers and uh, performers doing comedy these days. His brand new film entitled Cross My Heart opens tomorrow. Folks, please welcome back to this uh, show, Mr. Martin Short. Oh, Marty. <laughs> Doing great. You got so it. I'm walking in the lobby, uh -huh. <laughs> and a woman comes running up to me and says, "May I have your autograph, right. Mr. Kreskin?" <laughs> so my question is, I was wearing glasses, but I think it's time to change the hair because this, this it's actually happened. happened. Yes, it did happen uh. in the world of show business. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is. It happened just a few minutes ago. No, but it, no, it did happen. Yeah. So, so what does that mean? Does that mean that you, you have to lose at one point the bang look, I think, as you edge toward mid-30s? 
30s. Yeah, but I... As you are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you uh, see, you have... Your, your hair is good. No, my hair no, is not good. Let's I... not even start on my hair. Why? You know. You know the problems. You know the trouble. <laughs> you can't get good hair in this country anymore. You have to... <laughs> we're in the Philippines now looking for hair. Yeah. Uh, anyway, but, so that, that happened, and it was a throat clear. But see, I think that's just insane that someone would think you were uh, Kreskin, for heaven's sakes. Well, you know, it's, it's one of those things that, uh, you, that happens, Dave, and you just move on. You don't look back. <laughs> per, perhaps, perhaps the amazing Randy, maybe, but not Kreskin. No, I was wearing horn room glasses, yeah. and I was bending a spoon at the time, and they came up to me. <laughs> tell, right, me about, tell me about the movie. Now, you know, uh, a couple of years ago when you came here, you were just off of uh, SCTV, and then you were part of uh, Saturday Night Live, and now the last three or four times you've been here, you're a leading man you're in major big budget films pretty good deal yeah it's good yeah. it's good although i do feel that it's possible <laughs> for it to just end in other words you can go the bobby morse route which means that in about five years i could be touring with tribute as the sun <laughs> <laughs> you know, i mean you can never get too cocky no you can't i, mean, I think yeah. i think yeah, smart people don't get too cocky yeah. because it all could go, go how south to succeed you know 1993 <laughs> How to, and then this happens. Yeah, I mean, this is, there's no guarantees. What about, uh, let's talk some more about your characters. What are they doing? Do you, do you keep them, do they have lives going? <laughs> well, uh, they're, they're, they're not working now. Well, Ed Grimley... Ed Grimley? ...is in his... If they're going to do this with every character, we're going to run out of time. No, Ed Grimley is... Um, he's a newt, isn't he? No, he's not. He's, first of all, he's an everyman. B, he's timeless. No, <laughs> no not, what, Ed, what? not Ed Grimley. What do you mean? He's a newt. That no, guy. no, no. Uh, he, Every man? <laughs> Every man has a little Ed. Have you ever walked out of, you know, not felt good, not... It hasn't been like a typical, I'm Dave and I'm Dave day, but it's been, it's been a low-key day. And you walk out and suddenly it's... You look in the mirror and suddenly you see... <laughs> That's never happened. Yeah, that happens. Exactly. Pretty much around the Ed clock. Grimley right now, <laughs> he is a uh, he works as a ha handsome cab driver mm -hmm. when he's not on television. Yeah. You know, in Central Park, you know, with the horses and may I place your blanket? I hope it's <laughs> very warm. I must say, <laughs> up there is the home of Jacqueline Bouvier Kennedy Onassis. <laughs> I would imagine she would be a pretty decent person. I must say, eyes very far apart. Not her fault. <laughs> Jackie Rogers Jr. Jackie Rogers Jr. You know, has he had written earlier an interesting book entitled about life with his famous father, the tormented life. It was called Damn You, Daddy Sir. Mm -hmm. He has written a sequel entitled Damn You, Daddy Sir, One More Time. <laughs> so that's what he's doing. Yeah. Yeah. Who else is there that we ought to get Irving an update from? Irving Cohen. Irving Cohen, the uh, songwriter. And the 95, he's, well, he writes 150 songs a day. And, and if he were here... Give me a C, a bouncy C. <laughs> David Letterman, uh -huh. you're quite a guy. I'd say you stand about oh so high. You talk to the people and that's a good thing. Uh, but you don't work blue and that's also good. Da, 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 D, 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 whatever the hell else yeah. you want. We have a, You'd let me know if I ever became a show-off, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll do a commercial there. We have much uh, more to discuss with you. We're, we're not done with you yet, You're son. Not. No, and uh, we'll do that when we come back here from this commercial. <laughs> short movie is, uh, what's the name of the movie? It's, it's called uh, Cro Cross My Heart. Cross My Heart. Yeah, it's all about dating. It's uh, dating, yeah, it's, it's uh, the third date, the crucial date, where, yeah. and it takes place all in one day, mostly in an apartment, Annette O'Toole and myself, and uh, 
You know, it's 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 what happens on uh, yeah. that third date. There's yeah. some you know a lot, a lot of tension, a lot of decisions to be made. Well, there's sexual tension. There's sure. certainly. Uh, and I understand people tell me you're naked in this movie. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not. What do you what do you call naked? <laughs> Oh, you're going to like everything but a sweater and a hat. No. Um, you, you, you don't see the... F you, it's not a Richard Gere thing happening. Oh, now, that guy. That guy, see, there's something wrong there. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's no... There's no Johnny One Note happening there. Yeah. But it, it, you certainly... You see me in kind of underwear, and you see... I did ask... Now, I hear that for a second, you see you completely naked. Mm -mm. <laughs> no! There's one thing in the back! That. Yeah, from behind. You're naked from behind. Oh, but the, the, well, first of all, let me just say. What about your wife and kids? I, Nancy and I screened the movie privately, just, uh -huh. you know, and I, I was very nervous, and, but it seemed to be going well, you know. And at one point, <laughs> I tiptoe, I started to go, go to the bathroom, and I felt this, where do you think you're going, bub? So I sat down. No, I, she doesn't really yeah. talk that way, but there, no, no, she was actually... <laughs> I was going to say. Sorry, something I've made her Lucy. No, she was... <laughs> she watched it uh, with uh, great pride. No, it's, it's odd. You know, it I had is. to work out. You worked out a little for yeah. this? Yeah. Well, uh, gently, I was on the Barbara Hauer workout. Which oh. was, uh, you just go like this for about 10 seconds, and then you have a smart lunch three times a week. <laughs> three times a week. That keeps you toned up. Yeah. yeah. But it is, it is, it is. Well, would you ever do a bedroom scene? No. Let's say no, it was a... Uh, not oh. even in my own home. <laughs> Was a, uh... I sleep in the den at the house. I don't... <laughs> no. Now, let's say it's a brilliant script. No. It's a kind of a Mrs. No. Robinson thing. No. You and Amanda Blake. And it's your... your... No. What? No. Nobody needs to see me naked. Come on, dude. Oh, all right. <laughs> you, notice, you notice it was a guy who yelled, come on, yes, Dave. I, heard, I saw him in the restaurant earlier. He was ordering a Caesar salad, smoked salmon sandwich, and Singapore sling. <laughs> anyway, this, is good. this the, is good. The movie. Now, you know what? Let's do. Let's uh, let's go out, and I want you to talk to folks as they pay their toll and ask them to go to the movie. <laughs> Tell them about your new movie opening up, and just say, "I'm Martin Short. I'm the star of the new film. It opens up so and so. Would you please go and take a look for me?" Sure. All right. Let's go back there to the Triborough Bridge. Martin Short. Well, and I think this is the best way to do it on a grass on a grassroots level. It's, there you go. Hi. Excuse me. My name. My name's Dave Letterman. I'm here with Martin Short. Martin's starring in a brand new movie. He'd like to tell you all about it. What is your name, sir? Uh, my name is Ed Small. What makes you think that you're David Letterman? <laughs> And he's gone. Like that, he's gone. He's a. Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, sir. Uh, uh, well. it's a good right, bit. We'll try one more. You've come across the trap row, haven't you? Yes, I have. Now uh, this guy's this guy's not coming in. He he feels like there's some kind of police action. Oh, it is the police. Oh. Oh yeah. Well, we don't want to mess with him. All right, one more, and then Martin will just plug his. Uh... Hi. How are you, ma'am? Nice to see you. My name Hi. is Dave Letterman. And... They're rushing home to see that special one-hour Cosby tonight. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> All right, one more, and then we should have just shown the clip. No. Hi. How are you, sir? Can I have a second of your time? Because... <laughs> yeah, they just, they're worried about That's... the gate coming down. Uh, okay, well, this isn't going to work. So oh, let's... no. Keep going with it. It's fine. Sorry, one it's more. Like one more. Hi. Hi. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold it. Hey. <laughs> see, I'm panicking. Excuse me, sir. My... Hey. <laughs> How do you do, sir? My name is Dave Letterman. I do a television show here in... Oh, you've seen the program. Has this ever worked? <laughs> of course never it's worked. never worked. Hi, <laughs> right, excuse me, sir. Is that a rental, that van? A rental? Never mind. Do you, do you know... Do you ever go to movies? What is this? Yeah, uh, my name is Dave Letterman. I do a show here in New York City every night at 12.30 on NBC. Oh, hi, Dave. Hi, nice to see you. And, and with me tonight, what is your name, sir? My name's Nick for Carl. Nick, nice to see you. Uh, Martin, Martin Short is with me tonight. He's a very funny comedian and a fine actor, and he has a brand new movie uh, opening soon he'd like to mention to you and encourage you to go see. Marty? Well, I'd like to be in it, Marty. Nick? <laughs> Can I be it's in it? already been filmed, but Nick, it's called Cross My Heart. It opens tomorrow, and I hope you're there. I'll you be... and Mrs. Yeah, yeah. Are you going to give me tickets? Can I give me tickets? Huh? Well, you got any tickets? He, he wants tickets. 
Yeah, we'll get you yeah, some sure. tickets. Okay, Nick. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. You too, Dave. Nice bye -bye. talking with you. Bye bye. Truck is full of explosives. Um, let's see. When, when does it open? Cross my heart. Tomorrow. It opens tomorrow. Nationwide? Yeah. Nation, uh, 13 cities. 13 cities. Well, I know it's going to be a huge hit for you. You're a very funny man. Thank, Thank you, you very much for being here, Martin. Uh, tomorrow on the uh, program, oh, this is going to be another good program tomorrow. Sonny Bono and his former wife, Cher, will be here tomorrow. And uh, also a foot doctor, shoe collector, Dr. Ted Borges. That'll be here. That was one of the conditions of the booking. We had to have Dr. Ted Borges on or they wouldn't show. So, uh, Candace Bergen will be out here in a moment. Also, uh, comedian Stevie Ray Fromstein making his network television debut, as we like to say. Is that right? Oh, good. We'll look forward to that. <coughs> And, and also, do we have time to get somebody to uh, hook shot a token into the uh, machine there? Let's see. Can we go out there now, Hal, and see if there's anybody uh, eligible for this? Oh, my gosh. Nearly an accident. No, not this guy. How do you do, sir? Just keep moving. Pay the toll and go home. What are you having for dinner tonight? Uh, whatever my wife makes. Uh, all right. Well, good luck. You'll be starving. Good night. <laughs> All right, we need, we need somebody on the other side. Uh, oh, oh, this is good. Excuse me, sir. You, uh, hi, my name is Dave Letterman. I wonder if you can do me a favor. Do you have a, a token there? Yes. All right, give it to your... Is that your wife there with you? Yes, it is. Give it to your wife and see if she can hook it over the roof of the car. Oh, wait a second here. All right, now try and get it in, ma'am. Anton, how about a drum roll here? Here we go. Ready? No, there it is. <laughs> okay, we'll take care of it. Thanks for trying. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. Nice right. shot. Must be more difficult than it looks. Do we have time for this? You want to do this now? Huh? There's some kind of confusion here. Do this now? No, we're not, not going to do this. Okay. All right, we'll try it. Now, more over. the fridge. Take Thank you very much. How do you do, sir? Nice to see you. Looks like Arthur Godfrey. <laughs> Hal, can you can you get a shot of the uh, of the skyline there, uh, or is that not possible? This is looking back to Manhattan. Oh, it's more beautiful than even the postcards. Oh, there it is. Well, that's not bad. Wow. <laughs> Who is that? Get back. Just oh, they're changing. Uh, oh, they're they're unloading the machines now. Oh, this will be good. But excuse me, sir, are you with the Bridge Commission? Yes, we work for the authority. What is your name, sir? Uh huh. Bob? Bob? Okay, Bob, and what are you doing there exactly? <laughs> Not much. Uh huh. <laughs> is, is this, how often do they change the money in the machine? This is a fascinating insight, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? 40 times a day. 40 times a day, and how much money or the equivalent is in that container right there? Huh? Yeah, what do you say? No idea. No you idea. have no idea. They're okay. All right. They're waiting. There's, uh, I don't know how much the amount is. Whoever well, you control does that. Okay. Well, thank you very much for putting that in layman's terms that we can all understand. <laughs> you know what that is? Okay. That's enough of that. The heck with that. I have no idea what those guys are doing. <laughs> uh, let's see. We'll do a commercial and then, uh, oh my gosh, Candace Bergen will be here. Come on back. Our uh, next guest, uh, oh, this is exciting. We've been trying to have this woman on the program for many years, and finally she is here tonight. A beautiful and talented actress, model, photographer, and author. Her film, The Mayflower Madam, will be seen, of course, on another network tomorrow night. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Candace Bergen. You just, you just look great. Well, well, thank you. Yeah, but I mean, I've never met you before. I've spoken no. to you once on the phone, and you have a, a lovely phone voice. But you are m more striking in person than even uh, when we see you on television or films or in uh, pictures.
pictures and stuff? Well, I, I could say the same for you. Well, no, then we know you'd be lying. <laughs> No, it's uh, not true. Uh, your, your life changed, uh, improved, or I, tell us what happened. Two years ago, everything became great for you with your little baby Well, girl. yes, except that I had to stop watching the show, so I've been having a great time tonight, because yeah. it's the first time in two years that I've been able to stay up and see it. Well, that's all right. So I had a baby. Yeah. I, I got married seven years ago. That, that changes baby. everything for you, doesn't it, when you have a baby? Did you expect the change to be that uh, radical? Well, I, I expected it to be radical, which is why I put it off for so long, and now I wish I hadn't put it off yeah. for so long, because, because they tell you all about the radical changes, but they don't tell you it's the greatest love affair of all time. Yeah. Would you, and this is a silly, a silly question, the kind that they ask on uh, television, but would you, you do everything, you're an actress and a model and a photographer and so on and so forth, an author, would you, if somebody said you can do one or the other, you can, you can either be a professional woman or you can be a mother, which would you choose? Mom. Yeah, see, there you go. That's, that's what's important in life, don't you think? Well, yeah, I do. Yeah. I do. You know, it, uh, you get very rational about it, so you sort of lose the thread. But, it's, yeah. um, it's a, but also, I had a lot of time to find out that that's what was important. Yeah. Now I know I'm not missing anything, yeah. except the show. <laughs> You're not missing anything. <laughs> uh, and where, uh, Chloe? Yeah, where, yeah. where are we raising Chloe? Where is she? Uh, will well, she be a California girl, New York, she's European? She's sort of New York and France, but uh, mostly New York and California to visit her family out there. Yeah. Now, when you, when you go to France, do you, do you have a home there? We have a house in France. See, this is great. This story gets better <laughs> and better, doesn't it? What part of France? It's in the southwest. It's yeah. uh, way, way deep in France. Yeah. Is that, do you enjoy that as, as an American uh, girl who grew up in, I guess, Beverly Hills, right? I, I do enjoy it. I love being there. I, I did grow up in Beverly Hills, so I am sort of regarded as the wimp from Southern California right. because of being a vegetarian. And when you go shopping there, you don't get chicken under cellophane. It's not all remote. You go and they hold you a thing that's still flapping. And, and <laughs> say, oh, could, could you take the feet off, please? And I don't want the head either. And you know, maybe could you take off a few of the feathers? And, and they, uh, it's... So I'm, I'm a little bit of the weenie of the house. And yeah. then you go shopping, and it's truffle country, and it's foie gras country. And once you really know the genesis of foie gras... What is that? Well, it's, it's the liver of a goose. And, and, um, and once you see them sort of, you know, cramming food down a, a goose's throat... They, they force-feed the geese, don't they? they well, what do the the they feed them? They feed them grain and... Um, TV dinners. TV dinners, you know, high fat, because mm -hmm. foie gras is a fat liver. Yeah. And then the livers get diseased and infected, and a lot of the delicacies in France are diseased things, which is... <laughs> you know, you, you have cheese with mold, and you have truffles, which are like sort of cancerous tumors on the tips of trees. Really? And then foie gras, which is just an enor a, a, a liver bigger than the goose almost, mm -hmm. and it's veined. This drives my husband crazy. Easy when I do this, and I do this usually at dinner while people are eating foie mm -hmm. gras in France. You tell them what they're eating. Yeah. 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 And once we went to a restaurant and they brought us a chicken and something. My husband said, "What's a chicken?" And he says, "Oh, it's like a bag." I said, "A bag?" He said, "Yeah, you'll love it." And suddenly I look up, and it was like a horror movie I saw when I was a kid. It was a movie about a giant human eyeball that attacks a ski resort. Mm. And <laughs> in came this chicken with this enormous veined balloon that was sort of shaking and I went oh my god and he said that's the specialty of the restaurant this is the finest restaurant in Paris and it was chicken in a bladder it was a pig's bladder that had blown up in the oven and it was and the chicken was very moist and tender because they had stuffed it in this pig's bladder and it's an old medieval recipe and and it was a great honor to be served it so no, no I, th I think you were probably there on wacky chef night <laughs> I don't think that uh... I don't, uh... See, I'm, I'm with you on that. I would rather not endure that kind of a meal. Yeah, I yeah. mean, just chicken without a pig's bladder already, I was thrilled. <laughs> <know. laughs> let's, uh, let's talk about this movie now. You're, uh, this is the Mayflower, madam. This is the thing a couple of years ago. This, this woman was running a very high-class call girl operation. Is yeah. that the deal? Yeah. And you play, uh, what's her name, Sydney? Sydney Biddle Barrows. Sydney Biddle Barrows. Yes. Did you meet this woman? Sure. And what is she like? She's uh, very articulate, she's very um, clear-minded, very lucid, very smart, ambitious, very clever, great businesswoman. Uh -huh. And, uh, and I uh, was with her at a press conference where she got a lot of uh, 
hostile fire yeah. at 11 o'clock in the morning from very overweight women with shoulder pads and beads. <laughs> and, <laughs> and she handled herself. Um, she's very fast on her feet, very yeah. adroit. But now, uh, what, was she, what were the charges? She was... Uh, um... Well, the charges was that she was running an escort service, yeah. which, which usually is you know, led to flourish in the city, but because was she process. was such a blue blood, because she was a biddle, yeah. and because she had two Mayflowers, on, uh, one on each side, and she, but she just didn't have the trust fund, but she had yeah. the pedigree. But this was a felony, I don't know, was it? Well, I guess she, it she was, uh, it was a, a felony, but she was let off with a fine, because um, in order to release her client list, they would have had to publish the hundreds of names of New yeah. York lawyers yeah. and UN So the system and... kind of broke down there then, because if the it were anybody else, down. she might have done some time or a suspended well, sentence no, in or something? Fact, in fact, it went against her because she, she was a biddle and because she had such um, Tony clients, they thought that there was this whole system underneath that maybe she was sort of the tip of the iceberg. Oh, I in see. fact, yeah. she was just the iceberg. Turned out, yeah, there's all good. And um, there was a guy in Vice that thought he might be promoted yeah. if he busted her. Do, is, is this true we have to say goodbye to this woman now? Oh, no. Is that right? We can do what? Tell me about the pig bladder again. Come on, Candace. Uh, well, it was like this eyeball. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's see. Uh, it just it, it took us forever to get you here, and and I'm geez, well, so uh, you're now such I have a to knockout. Come back, and then I could meet. Bob well, now will you come back or not? Yes, yes, because the last time you said, "Oh, I'll come one day," and then well, six years later you finally showed up. <laughs> but I don't. I'll, no, I'll come back. All right, let's see this thing. Uh, the Mayflower Madam, uh, tomorrow night on another network. I guess that's all the information we need. Jeez, nice to see you. <laughs> Good luck to you, Candace. And it's Bergen. <laughs> now, now that's a handsome woman. Yes, indeed. Yeah, a lovely woman, Candace, Candace Bergen. Bergen. I'd give a month's pay to go to France with her. <laughs> to do what? Nothing, nothing, ah. Paul. Uh, our next guest is a uh, very funny gentleman who is making his network television debut right here this evening. From November 23rd to the 29th, he will be at the Las Vegas Improv, unless they have scheduled a fire for that period. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome uh, Stevie Ray Fromstein. <laughs> Good to be here. I was so excited coming out here. I just bumped my head, but don't worry, it's not going to hurt my performance. But I, it's good to be here. I was so excited coming out here. I just bumped my head, but don't worry, it's not going to hurt my performance. So where was I? Oh yeah. So the cop pulls me over. Says to me, "Do you have any idea how fast you're going?" So I said, "You're the fascist pig. You tell me." <laughs> Why well, didn't? use those exact words. I think what I said was, no, sir, I don't. <laughs> I've always been kind of shy. Uh, I remember the first time I ever called up a girl. It was a girl from a party. I was about 16. I called her up. Hello, Susie? Hi, I don't know if you remember me. You were at a party on Saturday night? Yeah, do you remember talking to a guy in a blue shirt? Yeah, and later on in the corner, kind of kissing a little? Yeah. Well, I was watching you. <laughs> I'm not the most aggressive guy in the world when I, when I meet someone. I never know when to make that first move. But I got to tell you, I was in a bar last week. This beautiful woman came up to me, offered to buy me a drink. And the next thing you know, it's like her place or mine. We're at her place. She says, excuse me. She comes back a minute later, totally naked, sits down beside me on the couch, puts her hand on my knee, starts licking my ear. So I figure, OK, take a chance. <laughs> got her phone number. <laughs> uh, me and women, I don't know, a woman came up to me recently, she said, I want you to be the father of my children. So I said, okay, great, you know, what happens? Two weeks later, she's gone, I'm stuck with these two kids. <laughs> uh, I had a girlfriend for a while, uh, we had a lot of problems. Once she called me a wimp. I'll tell you, that made me mad. I almost said something. <laughs> I, 
I gotta get more assertive, it's true. Like, when I get into a taxi, I say, wherever you're headed. <laughs> no, and I never had enough money, I remember, uh, so I tried to rob a bank, I went into this bank, I pulled out a gun, I said to the teller, I want you to take all the money you got in that drawer. Okay, now put it in my checking account. <laughs> I got caught. And uh, we never agreed on anything. I remember we were in this video store, and uh, I wanted to uh, rent uh, Orgy Girls. And, well, I'd read the book. <laughs> and she wanted to see Psycho, and I said, no way. I mean, that's a scary film. I don't want to go through that again. That shower scene is so scary. To, to this day, I'm afraid to stab a woman in a shower. <laughs> stays with you. But uh, to me, there's a difference between being a wimp and wanting to avoid unnecessary physical confrontation. Like I remember once, we were, in the, we were in a bad part of town and we saw these eight big guys pushing this old lady around. And my girlfriend says, you know, do something about it. And I said, I'll investigate. <laughs> so I go over and I say, and I'm not as strong as I look. <laughs> So I said, hey, fellas, is that any way to treat an old lady? They said, well, it's one way. <laughs> so I thought, that's reasonable. <laughs> well, you know, we didn't see it start. Maybe she said something. <laughs> then one of them says to me, why? You want to make something out of it? I said, yeah, I want to make something out of it. I want to make you sorry you were ever born, you greasy punk. Well, I didn't use those exact words. <laughs> I think what I said was, no, sir, I don't. <laughs> then my girlfriend said something, you know, then they said something back and forth. Now, I'll tell you, I'm not an aggressive guy, but I'll fight if I'm pushed hard enough. At one point I said, look, you punch my girlfriend one more time, that's it, pal. <laughs> You know, I was going to do something about it, but the guy had a gun, and that's not fair. I mean, I didn't see it, but he must have. I mean, nobody's going <laughs> to. Then my girlfriend got upset at me. I, I didn't feel like paying for a taxi home, and uh, so we went into Domino's Pizza. I ordered the pizza to be delivered, and we went with them. <laughs> But you know, it has that guaranteed delivery time, so I gave them the wrong directions. We got there late, saved a few bucks on the pizza. <laughs> Thank you very much. Stevie, nice job, Stevie. Thanks Thank for being here. Much. Tomorrow night, Sonny and Cher, everybody.